Chapter Three: The Peterkins Try to Become Wise. They were sitting round the breakfast table and wondering what they should do, because the lady from Philadelphia had gone away. If said Mrs. Peterkin, we could only be more wise as a family. How could they manage it? Agamemnon had been to college, and the children all went to school. But still, as a family, they were not wise. It comes from books," said one of the family. "People who have a great many books are very wise." Then they counted up that there were very few books in the house. A few school books and Mrs. Peterkin's cookbook were all. "That's the thing," said Agamemnon. "We want a library." We want a library," said Solomon John, and all of them exclaimed, "We want a library!" Let us think how we shall get one," said Mrs. Peterkin. "I have observed that other people think a great deal of thinking." So they all sat and thought a great while. Then said Agamemnon, "I will make a library. There are some boards in the woodshed, and I have a hammer and some nails." And perhaps we can borrow some hinges, and there we have our library. They were all very much pleased at the idea. That's the bookcase part," said Elizabeth Eliza. "But where are the books?" So they sat and thought a little while. When Solomon John exclaimed, "I will make a book," they all looked at him in wonder. "Yes," said Solomon John. "Books will make us wise, but first I must make a book." So they went into the parlor and sat down to make a book, but there was no ink. What should he do for ink? Elizabeth Eliza said she had heard that nut galls and vinegar make very good ink, so they decided to make some. The little boy said they could find some nut galls up in the woods, so they all agreed to set out and pick some. Mrs. Peterkins put on her cape bonnet. And、the little boys got into their India rubber boots, and off they went. The nut galls were hard to find. There are almost everything else in the woods: chestnuts and walnuts and small hazel nuts and a great many squirrels. And they had to walk a great way before they found any nut galls. At last they came home with a large basket and two nut galls in it. Then came the question of the vinegar. Mrs. Peterkin had used her very last on some beets they had had the day before. Suppose we go and ask the minister's wife," said Elizabeth Eliza. So they all went to the minister's wife. She said if they wanted some good vinegar, they had better set a barrel of cider down in the cellar, and in a year or two it would make very nice vinegar. But they said they wanted it that very afternoon. When the minister's wife heard this, she said she would be glad to let them have some vinegar. And gave them a cupful to carry home. So they stirred in the nut galls, and by the time evening came, they had very good ink. Then Solomon John wanted a pen. Agamemnon had a steel one, but Solomon John said poets always use quills. Elizabeth Eliza suggested they should go out to the poultry yard and get a quill, but it was already dark. They had, however, two lanterns, and the little boys borrowed the neighbors'. They set out in procession for the poultry yard. When they got there, the fowls were all at roost, so they could look at them quietly. But there were no geese. There were Shanghai's and Cochin Chinas and Guinea hens and Barbary hens and speckled hens and Poland roosters and bantams and ducks and turkeys, but not one goose. No geese but ourselves," said Mrs. Peterkin wittily, as they returned to the house. The sight of this procession roused up the village. A torchlight procession! cried all of the boys of the town, and they gathered around the house, shouting for the flag. And Mr. Peterkin had to invite them in and give them cider and gingerbread before he could explain to them that it was only his family visiting his hens. After the crowd had dispersed, Solomon John sat down to think of his writing again. Agamemnon agreed to go over to the bookstore to get a quill. Then all went over with him. The bookseller was just shutting up his shop. However, he agreed to go in and get a quill, which he did, and they hurried home. So Solomon John sat down again, but there was no paper, and now the bookstore was shut up. 
Mr. Peterkin suggested that the mail was about in, and perhaps he should have a letter, and then they could use the envelope to write upon. So they all went to the post office, and the little boys had their India rubber boots on, and they all shouted when they found Mr. Peterkin had a letter. The postmaster inquired what they were shouting about, and when they told him he said he would give Solomon John a whole sheet of paper for his book, and they all went back rejoicing. So Solomon John sat down, and the family all sat around the table looking at him. He had his pen, his ink, and his paper. He dipped his pen into the ink, and held it over the paper, and thought a minute, and then said, But I haven't got anything to say.